One of the things that topsoil really doesn't enjoy is being driven on again and again with heavy farm machinery. Intensive traffic over a paddock really knocks around soil health. It leads to compaction and the loss of soil structure. In the wet tropics where we can get a lot of rainfall, this compounds the problem when we use machinery when the soil is too wet. The way to reduce the impact of machinery traffic on your soil is to implement what we call control traffic farming or CTF. Control traffic farming is where you create two permanently separated zones in your paddock. This is the uncompacted area. This is where the roots are growing and we get better water infiltration because we have less compaction in the row area. That is the traffic area where it's compacted and where you can drive machinery upon. We have two distinct zones, the trafficked area and the untrafficked area. The old way of farming was that after the wet season, after the wet, we'd go in with the big tractors, dual wheels, disc arrows, go all over it, then we'd rotary out and all, but then we'd dig down probably 250 mil and the ground underneath there, it was like, it was probably harder than what the ground was when we, when we started. You couldn't dig it with a shovel. When you reduce soil compaction and improve soil structure, you'll get much larger plant root growth. Some research up here has shown that you get over six times the root volume in your topsoil when you go to control traffic farming. Another benefit is you'll get increased soil drainage. As you've increased the pores in your soil, your soil will drain better. It also means that more air will flow into your soil. Bigger root growth and better drainage and aeration means you'll end up with more efficient nutrient management as your plants will be able to utilise the nutrients that you're providing for your crop. Because your machinery are all on the same tracks, you actually drive less over the paddock in one year. We are 1.9 metre centres, so uh, we, we reduce our travelling time in the paddock by about 20%. Because your soil has better structure, you also need less horsepower to get through your soil. So overall, the diesel savings, the time savings and the machinery savings can really add up and improve the bottom line in your cropping business. Finally, you'll get less runoff of sediment from your paddock into your local waterways. This can be a real benefit for the wider catchment and our environment. Implementing a controlled traffic farming approach to your business is a big undertaking and you need to follow a couple of steps carefully to make sure it's a success. The first thing you need to do is decide on the row spacing that your wheel tracks will be set at. In sugarcane farming you often set that row spacing based on the width of the harvester and all your other equipment then needs to align with that spacing. If you're growing other crops, then you need to decide on a wheel spacing, usually based on a key bit of machinery, whether it's your tractor or the spraying unit. You look at the heaviest piece of equipment you've got on your farm, and you, that's the row spacing you are at, because that's the thing that's going to do the most damage. So we went to 1800. You then need to make sure that all your equipment is set up with a good, accurate GPS system. The GPS AB line is, is in our GPS. It is stored on my uh, desktop computer for a, for a backup. And those rows are, are there in that spot uh, forever in a day. The decision I made, I went to 1800. One of the reasons was uh, row spacings trying to match the haul outs. I was more worried about the haul outs than the harvester. And at 1800, keeping it simple, it's easier to punch into the GPS. There's no mistakes with the planter contractor. It's very easy to multiply when you're working out your spray rig. And we're metric, we're not imperial, we're 1800. If you use contractors in your farm, such as spray contractors or harvest contractors, they need to follow your permanent wheel tracks in your paddock. So this requires a bit of coordination and negotiation. The final step in implementing controlled traffic farming is to do a deep rip in your growing crop zone. This is because there's usually a compaction layer and you need to open that compaction layer and allow roots to penetrate. 
from the second year onwards, because you have all your machinery in control permanent wheel tracks, you shouldn't need to deep rip again. Control traffic farming is a really effective way to address soil health and poor soil structure, but it needs to be used as part of an integrated approach. No-till or minimum till operations, addressing soil health issues, managing nutrients holistically and using cover crops are some other strategies that you can pull together to really improve your whole farm business here in the wet tropics. If you want more information about implementing controlled traffic farming, then get in touch with your district extension officer or follow the links at the end of this video.